Attention! This episode of Akako Dojo is presented in Spoony Vision. Every scene will be accompanied by images of Noah Antwile. Pull the string! Pull the string! Happy Halloween, everybody! This is Amiyu Nakago, bringing you randomness straight from my crazy little head. Now, I don't really celebrate Halloween myself, since it's not as widespread here as it is elsewhere, but I thought I'd get into the spirit of things all the same and do a themed review. But let's sit and think for a moment. What exactly is Halloween? Well, Halloween is, of course, the night when ghosts and goblins and demons and whatnot roam about and cause all sorts of spooky hijinks. But of course, it's all just in people's heads. Monsters were born from people's imagination, or more precisely, from their fear. And fear has been an integral emotion in human beings since the dawn of time. Fear warns us of impending danger, tells us when to run, but sometimes people can be afraid of some pretty weird things like clowns, or girls, or even vampires. But one of the most well-known and widespread fears is the fear of the dark. Now, the fear of the dark is basically just an extension of the fear of the unknown, because when it's dark, you don't know what you're gonna rid into. And so, there's of course plenty of people who find the fear of the dark in itself to be rather irrational, because it's not the dark that people are afraid of, but it's the things that may or may not be in there. Which brings us to a little-known game on PC and PS1 called Heart of Darkness, which is basically next to nothing to do with the Joseph Conrad novel of the same name, but everything with the subject I discussed just now. But before I get into that, let me tell you about a man named Eric Chahi and his legacy. Back in the early 90s, French game designer Eric Chahi, working for Delphine Software, released Another World, or Out of This World for all you Yanks out there, following a rigorous development cycle of two years. While not a commercial success, the game gained a lot of praise for its unique minimalistic and cinematic style and outstanding animation. It told the tale of a young physicist named Lester Knight Chaikin, who was transported to a hostile alien world when lightning struck his laboratory while he was running a particle accelerator experiment. The game itself was a unique blend of 2D side-scrolling and adventure gaming elements reminiscent of Prince of Persia, as the player was constantly flung headlong into dangerous situations and had to rely on quick thinking and reaction in order to survive. It went on to become a cult classic and even inspired developers like Hideo Kojima, the man behind the Metal Gear franchise, and Fumito Ueda, the director of Ico. But as awesome as it was, there was still room for improvement. Chahi probably realized this, and thus left Delphine and started his own company, Amazing Studio, and got to work on Heart of Darkness, the development of which took triple the amount of time it took to make Another World, as delay followed delay on top of delay, before finally being released in 1998. When I first played the demo, my reaction was as follows. <laughs> well, I was 11 at the time, and I'm still a bit of a pussy that way, so you can imagine my reluctance in revisiting this particular title. But even when it was scaring the pants off me, I was still fascinated by it. And it's this fascination that eventually led me to obtain the full version and play through it in the present day. Call it morbid curiosity. The same thing that led me to try my hand at God knows how many shitty games and movies. And sooner or later will compel me to finally watch Dragon Ball Evolution as well. Quite pesky that. Anyways, the game starts promisingly enough as we're treated to an intro movie set to orchestral music by Bruce Brofton whose work I'm personally not all that familiar with, and performed by the Sinfonia of London. That's some impressive credentials right there. But after some pretty shots of the solar system, everything goes downhill as we pan down to Earth. Andy! Have you not enough again? No, I was just sleeping in my class in broad daylight! Oh my god. Look at that character animation. I know this is from 1998, but that's no excuse. This isn't even Uncanny Valley, it's more like the fucking Uncanny Canyon! Anyways, our protagonist is Andy, your average screwball Dennis the Menace wannabe who's caught sleeping in class by his asshole teacher, who then proceeds to drag him into a dark and cramped cumbert. Wait, am I watching some weird gender-flipped version of Matilda? 
Of course, Andy's deathly afraid of the dark, and to top it off, the old bag even laughs at the poor kid. But Andy is literally saved by the bell and runs off. Outside of the school, Andy meets up with his dog, Whiskey. What? Don't look at me, I'm just saying it as it is. And thus the two head off to have some fun together. Ah, reckless disdain for traffic safety. Isn't that just endearing? Well, I better stop riffing on the cutscenes or we're gonna be here all day. Long story short, Andy and Whiskey are out relaxing in the park where everyone's gathering to see the eclipse. But when it arrives, all hell apparently breaks loose as something comes and takes away Whiskey. After shedding a few manly tears, Andy runs off home and, in a manner that would make Rube Goldberg proud, enters his... high-tech treehouse laboratory... and powers up his... homemade interdimensional transport... and takes along his jury-rigged... laser rifle. What? It could happen. So after gearing up, Billy Blaze becomes Commander Keen and blasts off in the beam with bacon mega rocket to put a stop to the Voracon menace once and oh wait, wrong preteen genius. To the amazement of both Andy and the collective audience, the ship actually works and transports him to a dark world of hostile creatures and dangers galore, where the master of darkness reigns. Notice he looks in no way like Andy's teacher. Foreshadowing much? The master of darkness commands an army of horrific shadow creatures as well as this weird, sniveling, star-screamish pink elephant guy known simply as The Servant, who's probably the funniest character in the game. And given that he's constantly whimpering and whining and spewing mucus all over the place, that doesn't bode well. Whiskey's kidnapping also turns out to be a case of mistaken identity, since it was actually Andy who was the intended target. What does the Master want with Andy? It's never explained. So basically, what we've got so far is this. Chai is just ripping off his own work, retreading another world, piece by piece. Both games share a similar story, but in another world's case it was actually somewhat plausible because of SCIENCE and whatnot. But Heart of Darkness just pulls this stuff out of its ass and expects us to swallow it. Okay, that metaphor sounded better in my head, but you know what I mean. Andy is also a painfully underdeveloped and terribly annoying character. Is Fear of the Dark? It's never brought up again after the intro. It's one defining character trait and it's brought up only once and then tossed out the window. Not to mention his dialogue combined with the voice acting and horrific animation make him pretty much the worst child protagonist since Jake Lloyd in The Phantom Menace. And speaking of which, later on you meet the Amigos, the most painfully unfunny, stupid and annoying alien scrappy since Jar Jar Binks. They're completely useless too, unlike your alien friend in another world who you actually felt kinship for because he saved your life time and again even if it meant getting captured himself, to the point where you'd gladly return the favor later on. Not these guys. They just do their ridiculous antics during cutscenes and have no bearing on the game itself. The plot is pretty much non-existent as well. Andy just goes from place to place trying to get to whiskey. There's no shocking twists or sudden revelations or anything like that. But of course, Another World did the same thing going for it. But again, it made sense there because it wasn't about trying to reach a certain goal. It was just all about survival. And just listen to some of this dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Amigo. Amigo what? Amigo, amigo. Boy, what a scary place. Dark Kingdom. Whoa. Amigo. Casamigo. Casamigo. Wow, what a neat place. It's an upside down island. We know it me. We vegetarians! Wow! That's for me! I'm star! I could eat a horse! Oh, oh, no touch! Last food! Last, last, last food! Remember how Another World had, like, no dialogue? At all? And still managed to perfectly convey what was going on? Maybe they should have just stuck with that. So in six years' time, six long years, not only has Eric Jai not learned a damn thing about storytelling, he's actually gotten worse. Less is more. Another world proved as much. Heck, even the inferior Sega CD sequel Heart of the Alien was better than this, because it was still minimalistic. 
So the story is pretty much negligible, so what does that leave us with? The game itself, and thankfully it's not that bad, although, again, it does little to improve upon its predecessor. You guide Andy through screen after screen, fighting monsters, passing obstacles, solving puzzles, etc. But there's an important lesson you'll learn very early on. You are going to die at least once in every new situation. And if you'll die once, you'll die a lot more. Cause that's something else you should know about Eric Jahi. He is a sadistic bastard. Pretty much every game he's done, and Another World and Heart of Darkness in particular, have some of the most varied, brutal, and creative death scenes in all of video game history. But in this game's case, it's even more disturbing than usual because, well, this is a little kid we're talking about. Infinite immortality, my ass! Over the course of the game, Andy is torn to shreds, falls off cliffs, has his spinal column snapped like a twig, is swallowed whole, burned to a crisp, or even has the flesh stripped off his bones. Well, actually, it's just his shirt that gets torn off, but it looks startlingly similar to what I just said. And all that's just scratching the surface, no pun intended. So how the heck did this game ever get an E rating? It's obviously way too dark and scary for kids, as you will note from my initial reaction back in the day. Fortunately, you do have infinite lives, but given that checkpoints are few and far between, you will often be repeating the same scene over and over. Though, thankfully, they're a little bit more common than in another world. You're not entirely defenseless either, as Andy starts off with his laser gun that can easily blast enemies to oblivion and can be aimed in several directions. However, the fun doesn't last long as Andy's gun and Civ helmet are soon consumed by a fat slobbering monster, and from then on it's run first and ask questions later. But I ask, why give Andy the gun in the first place if you're just gonna take it away from him again only a few minutes into the game? In another world, Lester started off completely defenseless and only later got his hands on a weapon. But similarly, later on in this game, Andy finds a magical glowing rock that gives him the power to fire Hadoukens from his hand, both in regular and Shinku flavor. Not only is this useful in dispatching foes and blasting apart obstacles, a charged up blast can also make seeds instantly blow up into a fully grown plant, which can be climbed to reach higher areas, and conversely, plants can be instantly regressed back to a seed effectively making these portable ladders. Enemies, however, are far from easy cannon fodder for Andy. The shadow monsters you encounter come in various shapes and sizes, but they all have one thing in common. They're smart, they're quick on their feet, and they're hungry for some human boy. They'll actively dodge your fire and work their way around it towards you, meaning you'll have to constantly stay on your toes, especially since you're often swamped with swarms of enemies all around you, and a single touch often means instant death. Some enemies are a bit more lenient, however, and will simply grab Andy from behind if they get the chance, meaning you'll have to shake them off by rapidly pressing left and right before more of those horrors get their icky paws on you and have you for dinner. Hey, hold on a minute. Swarming, intelligent, flesh-eating shadow monsters. This all sounds vaguely familiar. This is not a shadow. It's a swarm. An eating swarm. The piranhas of the air, the Vashta Narada. Literally, the shadows that melt the flesh. Every shadow? No, but any shadow. Hey, who turned out the lights? Hey, who turned out the lights? Who turned out the lights? Hmm, at least with these guys you have a fighting chance, so I guess I should count my lucky stars. Of course, it doesn't get any better later when you get to fight these winged creeps, who lop fireballs that'll scorch your ass faster than you can say third-degree burns. And by the way, what is with the electric guitar riffs whenever someone uses their firepowers during cutscenes? The forces of darkness apparently are pretty fucking metal. Oh, and also, they're created when an amigo touches the ground and as a result is corrupted by his own shadow. Are you okay? Oh, no. Just one of them. Creepy. Other enemies include shadows cast on walls that will suddenly start leading a life of their own, or these worms that burrow in and out of rock faces. They're pretty annoying, since they'll constantly hide when you're firing away, meaning you have to wait for them to appear and then take a shot at them. But 99% of the time you'll miss, and then they pop up right next to you and drag your carcass off to oblivion. When you're not busy dying, most of the time you'll be trying to get from A to B. But that often presents several challenges too. Take this situation early on, for instance. After a bit of rock climbing, and certainly not the last of it in the game, you find yourself on top of this ledge with no apparent way to proceed. 
Jumping off is an instant death sentence, but you're tempted by this one patch of climbable wall to try and jump and grab hold of it, but it's impossible. What you're supposed to do is this. Okay, what the hell just happened? Yeah, this is what the game expects you to do. Jump on the ledge twice, after which the whole thing collapses and through some vines hanging around, Andy is hoisted up by some local dinosaur bones. How the fuck are you supposed to guess that? Oh, and when you get to the top after climbing some more, don't stand around too long, or else these bones that have apparently resisted gravity for so long will suddenly just go, oh fuck it, and succumb to its overpowering force. There's also scenes like these, where Andy has to push a rock attached to some complex system of pulleys to open a trap door on another screen. Problem is, however, you can't reach it. But walking to the edge of the chasm, Andy's shadow suddenly pushes the rock for him. Puzzle solved. This sort of lateral thinking would be an interesting gameplay element were it not for the fact that this is the only time in the entire game you have to do something like this. Running and jumping often presents several problems too, as Andy has the unfortunate habit of reacting a second too late when you tell him to jump, and thus often plunges headfirst into swamps or ravines, especially since you'll often be running from one screen to the next, and by the time you realize you have to slow down, it's already too late. In addition, you'll sometimes come across situations where upon entering a new screen, you immediately run into a monster or lethal obstacle, and unless you already knew it was there, you have virtually no time to react and instantly die. What the hell kind of lame newbie trap is that? Oh, and let's not forget, it's the same damn thing that happened all too fucking often in another world. What the hell was Chai doing all this time? Hibernating? All my bitching aside, however, what Heart of Darkness does succeed at is atmosphere. The gorgeous pre-rendered backgrounds, coupled with the moody ambient noises, does very well to evoke the feeling of desolation and solitude. Sadly, the musical score is only heard during cutscenes, and if you've been paying attention so far, you'll know I'm not too fond of those, so it feels kind of wasted on them. I would much rather have preferred some moody tunes during the actual game, but then again, it probably might have detracted from the atmosphere. Also, as you've seen throughout the review, the sprite-based animation is gorgeous, although it was already somewhat dated at the time. Nonetheless, it's one aspect of the game that's a definite step up from another world and its rigid polygons. Sadly, however, the regular sprites clash horribly with several pre-rendered characters that you encounter later on, to say nothing of the terrible, terrible cutscenes. Though there are some impressive transitions from game to cutscene here and there. You know what absolutely ruins the game for me, though? The ending. Andy has made his way into the Master's throne room after spending about 15 minutes putting the magic rock back together after the Master destroyed it earlier. And the final piece is at the end of the walkway. The Amigos, having apparently infiltrated the castle in the meantime, hoist down the rock and, ignoring the Master's warning that he'll destroy us all, Andy spouts off a painful attempt at a one-liner. Before slamming the piece back into place and dropping the magic rock down into the black hole. As a result, the Master's floating platform collapses and he tumbles into the black hole, but not without dragging Andy along with him, while the castle falls apart around them. Are you ready now to face the heart of darkness? Title drop! So yeah, we now find ourselves in the heart of darkness itself, which is quite spooky and all as you're trapped in an inky black void with several eerie eyes staring at you. Andy's gun apparently got broken in the fall as you're forced to resort to using it as a club against the creatures you face down here. Once you've ran around a bit and clobbered a few monsters, however, a sliver of light suddenly appears and the final cutscene kicks in. Andy is faced with a hellish creature and... Oh, it's just Whiskey. And hey, they're back in Andy's treehouse. What? I don't fucking believe this. Chai went for an it was all just a dream ending? Were Whiskey and Andy just playing? Did the black hole transport them home somehow? Somebody tell me, what the fuck just happened? Again, this is where Another World remains superior. The ending came a bit sudden, okay, but it was nice and bleak, as Lester was likely trapped in the other world for the rest of his life, but at least he wasn't alone and out of danger for the time being. But here, they just suddenly give us this sickeningly Disney style, they all lived happily ever after ending. And he goes to bed, he's not afraid of the dark anymore, and a story. That's weak. Oh, but Chahi even has the balls to give us an or is it after this, as we see the Amigos collecting bits of Andy's spaceship. And that's it. The only other thing that follows, aside from the end credits, is the cutscene of Andy falling into the black hole, only this time in 3D. 
Yes, apparently the original release of the game came with a pair of red and blue 3D glasses, but since my copy of the game doesn't have them, I can't vouch for how good the effect is. And it's not much in the way of a reward, either. So, that's Heart of Darkness for ya. Despite its lengthy development period, it utterly fails to meet the standard set by its predecessor, but nonetheless, it is still an entertaining game in its own right if you can look past its flaws, or if you're simply a glutton for punishment and like to experience dying over and over and over and over again. It helps if you're a sadist too. I'm Ami Yuridakago, and we'll be seeing each other out there some... Hey, who turned out the lights? <laughs> oh man, I'm alive. No more tuna pizza before bedtime. <sighs> what? What? No! Ah! Ah! Free. Free. <laughs> <laughs> I suddenly have an overpowering urge to play Shadow the Hedgehog, even though I know it's terrible.